Hello and welcome back to the show. We have a really interesting guest today. When you think of entrepreneurs, where do we come from? What backgrounds do we have to become an entrepreneur? I know I've in the past have had this understanding that there's kind of these typical, you go through startups, you do things, you know, there's certain types of backgrounds, but having this show and talking with you, you all out there, I'm realizing entrepreneurs come from everywhere, especially when they come from areas where aren't usually even considered business focused. Yeah. Someone from a traditional field who all of a sudden comes up with an offering that better serves their customers. It becomes this hybrid, both of the field that they're professional in, but then also how they come about and provide this service. I love it when you know, I see success like this. This is so much fun. Well, today's guest has built an amazing background in the legal field. She's been a law clerk, a lawyer, a professor, director of operations, She's and chief legal officer. She's runner. She's running her own law firm. She speaks everywhere, and she's an advocate for lawyers' rights in the law firm. So, like being treated well and kind of massacring, stumbling over that. But I am so excited to have her on today. She's the owner of Hashtag Legal, and is gaining incredible acclaim for her legal support of digital businesses. You know, her Instagram alone for hashtag legal, um, we'll have everything in the notes. It's just so much great information and so much fun and helpful to understand what you kind of need while you're in business for the legal environment, you know, in your business. All right. So enough of me blabbering. Let's welcome Jamie Lieberman to the show. Hello, Jamie. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I am really excited as I was just telling the audience because you have such an amazing background in the legal profession and in having businesses around the legal profession. And then hashtag legal is really doing some really cool stuff. Love your Instagram uh, there. Um, and I'm just excited to have you here. So thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for inviting me. I'm excited. Cool. Um, Given that, you know, you really do have this amazing background in the legal profession and, you know, with different businesses and teaching and working for a judge and all this, now that you have hashtag legal, how do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Gosh, um, I feel like that answer is ever changing. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like... Uh, I'm the kind of person who is not really someone who sets big goals. Mm -hmm. I just sort of follow where things are taking me, which makes so many business coaches just cringe. But um, I go where I feel like um, my career needs to go. And yeah. that's how every single step has taken. So I feel like I'm always changing as an entrepreneur. You know, you know, a couple of years ago, if you would have asked me that question, I would have said, oh, I'm building a law firm. And now if you ask me that question, I would say, oh, I'm moving so much into strategy and working with clients that are just on such a much larger scale than yeah. when we first started out that my role has changed so much. And I also have, you know, a thousand ideas that are like percolating in the back of my head as many entrepreneurs do. So every once in a while I think, oh, am I going to start another business, which I haven't done yet, <laughs> not for a little while. So I feel like the answer to that is always evolving and changing. Very cool. Yeah. Because, you know, I like that you say you're getting stretched because when you do get into businesses, you do start seeing like, oh, I can see where this impacts other people. And, you know, your background as head of operations in a previous, you know, so it's like, I could see where those things come to bear. And that is really cool. Um, do you give much thought, you know, you say you're kind of going where you, you know, where you kind of feel versus think, which is, you know, I... Anyone who tells you there's any one way of doing this is probably, you know, selling something. <laughs> you know, it's the one thing I've <laughs> yes. noticed. Um, you know, yeah, there is about being deliberate and focused, but the reality is we all create our own journeys and that's what's kind of very cool of how you're doing this. You know, you say you're thinking about other businesses, but are you giving much thought of where you want to be as an entrepreneur down the road or are you just sort of 
chasing it? Um, yeah, I think to myself that the the reason I started my business and the whole goal behind it was for two reasons. And I feel like I have to, con- as long as I'm continuing along with that vision and those those values, I feel good. And there are two reasons. One, to create just a really comfortable and challenging and safe workspace for the people who work for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that was really something I felt was very much missing in all of my previous work experience prior to starting my own company, uh, especially in the legal profession. And then the other piece of that is serving clients, which is something that I love doing um, and serving them in a way that makes them feel well cared for, makes them feel as if they have a partner in their corner. Um, And as long as I'm continuing to do that for clients, I think the way that we do that is always changing. And I see how you know, how when we started, it was one way of serving clients and then it continues to sort of innovate and change because I think there's a lot of space for innovation in the legal world um, because it's just such a, I mean, I hate to say it, like so many people are, these law firms are just so bulky and heavy and they're just very set in their ways. And so I'm constantly looking for new ways that I can service or work with clients in a way that's different or new. And so that's really what gets me excited is finding a new way to connect with clients and finding a space where um, it feels innovative to them because my clients are innovators. So for me to not be that, they would just, we wouldn't match. Well, you know, how are you kind of discovering these new ways? Is this by, you know, obviously talking with clients and stuff, but like, what is that kind, how is that happening for you? Because it's, it's super, it's really talking to clients. It's having them come to me and start talking to me about what their issues are and me thinking, well, that's really interesting because I've just heard that same issue from the last 15 people that I spoke with in the last couple of weeks. There's something here. I mean, that's the cool thing about the work I do is I see trends in industries because clients come to me in times, two times, one times of crisis (laughs) or two times of growth. That's really when you're going to come talk to a lawyer. Not many people really sit down and say, I'm super excited to build the legal foundation of my business. (laughs) They're usually focused on their brand, their marketing, like the the sexier stuff. (laughs) Um, So when clients come to me, it's usually because something is happening or shifting in their space. And so that enables me to say, oh, I see something's going on here. Let me reach out to all my clients and say, hey, I notice this is what's going on. Have you thought about X, Y, and Z, or even just providing some education around that area? Mm -hmm. No, I could so see that because, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of the three real cases. It was, um, you know, having someone like steal my brand and pitch services, you know, and have a domain with like the business plus like one extra Mm -hmm. word and like say they were my agency and it was like okay um and then yep. you know the legal fun of that uh, i remember you know we won but it cost me twice as much as i got in fees i was like <laughs> maybe yep. i shouldn't have won um and yeah and then growth when we were looking to sell it was all of a sudden like do we have all of our documents in order <laughs> <laughs> yep that's right Yes. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it is that funny thing. It's just like, oh, okay, how do we, you know, you know, you need a le- you know, as a business, you know, you need to have good thing, but it's not, it's not part of the very long, long, long list we all carry in our head. And we say we're trying to keep a nice organized manner, but usually just sits there. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's one of, that's actually how my law firm started was education. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's something I continue to do. I appreciate your shout out to our Instagram. We just educate all the time. It's why I speak. It's why I go on podcasts. Because even if someone hears me and doesn't hire me, but goes and finds somebody else, (laughs) that's a win to me because I just feel like the legal profession in the entrepreneurial space is just, it's second class. It is not thought of unless you need us and then you need us. But really, it is not on that list of like the first five people. I mean, people are hiring business coaches before they're hiring lawyers, and that just makes my head explode. I don't understand it. There's space for everything, but if you don't have your legal foundation set, it doesn't matter how good your strategy is. I mean, I've seen companies eviscerated because of a mistake that was made, and I don't want to see that because it shouldn't be that way. And what I found interesting going through, you you know, and, uh, you know, I'm going to 
paraphrase how I see a lot of you more, you seem more leaning towards the bootstrapping, you know, the people who create their own, you know, what I call their own realities, their own businesses, because I always found it, you know, as someone who had done that, you know, through agencies, when it came to business, you know, when it came, you know, yes, if I was, as I got bigger, they were more than happy to be around and there, but it was like, when you're low, when you're starting off, the startup lawyers are like the VC world. You know, it's all there. You don't have yes. that like, oh, wait, I'm bootstrapping it. And yes, you're downloading your last company with the downloadable forms, Rocket Legal, was that? I can't, you know, I remember- no, that one was called Business Ease, but it was similar yeah. to like- Well, I meant like, or... yeah, similar. Yep. Yeah, sorry. I didn't, you know, not, um, but it is that like, okay, there was some efforts, but now seeing firms like yours that work more hand in hand, that is an interest. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, more of what we're going to see with the great resignation, you know, more of the need for that. Absolutely. And, you know, we do work with some clients, obviously, who have gone out and got funding yeah. or their sole goal no, is to <laughs> get funding. That's a different world for sure than what I'm talking about. Although even there, I have seen, because I work with a lot of tech companies and I've seen software as a service companies go out to get funding and they are solely focused on that funding. They didn't have a lawyer write their terms and conditions oh, yes. or their privacy policy. And it blows my mind. I'm like, you have, you know, you just raised $5 million and you're very focused on that one piece, but you're not focused on the bigger picture. Um, which, like I said, is terms, privacy, things like yeah. that. Um, so that's another thing that I do see sometimes is being singularly focused on the funding. But yes, uh, oftentimes, particularly if you do bring in investment, your you know your investors are going to drive who you choose as legal, um, and so you just sort of know, and it's all built in. But this is for you know the bootstrap or um, the individuals who start and then rapidly scale and find themselves, like you said, at you know seven figures all of a sudden. And I have clients come to me multiple seven figures, and they've never talked to a lawyer. Yep, I mean the rise of content creators right now it is beautiful, fascinating <laughs> as a thing because yeah. of you know platform reach and all the other fun, fun, fun things, you know, and it is, and these questions are becoming and yeah, <laughs> sorry. I'm like, oh yeah, let's, let's talk about this. And that. Um, but, you know, talking about you as an entrepreneur, what do you think has helped you the most, you know, sort of progress, you know, and move forward as an entrepreneur? Um, the people around me, no question. Hiring correctly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my peers, you know, finding a really great community because being an entrepreneur is really lonely. <laughs> it's, you know, if you don't have a partner, if you're just going at it alone, you're a founder, whether you're raising funds or you're not, um, whatever phase you're in, you can sort of feel like you're on an island. Yeah. And so I have found the greatest resource has been my employees who are just I mean, I, I had, I mean, I talked to them all day, every day, constantly, but I just had a call with my director of operations. And as we hung up, I said to her, I was like, I know I say this to you all the time, but I'm going to keep saying this. I could not do this without you. She is the backbone of my company. Um, and so for me, that's been the only thing is hiring right. <laughs> yeah. um, and also finding a really, I had a recent podcast a guest come on my show and she called it a personal board of directors, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, finding a really cool, trusted, small group of individuals who you can call when you're having those moments of fear, frustration, um, excitement, elation, yeah. something amazing it happens. Yeah. You know, I, one of the members of my personal board of directors is she runs a product-based business and she just got um, accepted to Target's incubator program. Like nice. how big and incredible is that? And we just couldn't shout it high enough. Like how amazing is that? So it's all important, but that really has been, and, and that group can change. Mm -hmm. I outgrew people who I, at one time they were on that, in that group. And then it shifted and changed as the business grows and changes. Well, all right. That, that's a great, you know, that leads to probably a great question. Cause I know a lot of entrepreneurs have difficulty in that because they get so, caught up in like mentor, advisor, this, 
you know, having a personal, I mean, yes, friends, you go, you have drinks, you go see, da, 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 da. But how do you kind of create that, you know, that separate, you know, how did you go about creating this personal board? Um, I am really outgoing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't noticed that at all. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not an introverted uh, entrepreneur. Uh, honestly, I meet a lot of people all the time. And every once in a while, there's just a connection. There's a click. And you have this yeah. moment where you kind of look at each other and you're like, Okay. There's something more here. We're going to get to know each other. It's a slow thing. I think everybody, uh, everybody, I don't want to generalize. A lot of entrepreneurs want it to happen tomorrow. Everything has to happen tomorrow. We're moving, moving, moving. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. um, and so as much as we all want that viral video or, yes. you know, that huge million seven figure launch, um, you know, those, those things take time uh, and uh, it's, it's for sustainability. So, Cultivating relationships, no matter what your business is, whether it's product mm -hmm. or service based, is uh, is everything. And so, really spending the time to get to know people. You know, I met pre pandemic. I traveled a lot. I spoke at a lot of events. Yes. I attended events, um, and that for me was key to meeting people in all different areas. And often it was the other a, a similar a speaker. Like if I was speaking at an event, maybe it was one of the other speakers. Maybe it's a founder of a company I just found really interested, and I wasn't ever pitching business, but I thought, I really love what you do. And I just want to kind of talk to you because I think I could learn from you. Those types of relationships, um, that that's really how, and it just takes a while and sort of then organically happens. I did join a local entrepreneur group, um, where I met a number of really incredible, it was female, uh, entrepreneur group. Mm -hmm. um, we were all moms as well, which is another yes. sort of you know, great demographic to, to, for me to talk to, because I do have two children. And, um, I met some amazing women there who are running businesses, who are moms. And so we yeah. had similarities in common, even if our businesses, it, there was no other lawyers. It didn't matter though, because yeah. we were all experiencing similar issues. Yes. The, I always find it funny where it was like pre-parent, uh, pre-parenting, pre-parents. I never had parents, um, pre-parenting. <laughs> It was like, oh yeah, the, you know, those they always go to, they always leave the party early. They do this, and then it's sort of like, oh wait, you find other people are in that. Like, yes, I, I don't care how you know, doesn't matter how late I want to go out. I'm always up at six a.m. tomorrow. Right, right. they're That's waking right. me up, and it yes. hurts. <laughs> when it's, it yeah. does. <laughs> so yes, you learn that very quickly to change and kind of adapt, but then also the world experience. No, that's very mm -hmm. cool. Do you, you know, just because I find I, you know, I find it something that I need a lot of work on. Do you, this group of people, you know, this personal board, and then, you know, is this something you kind of not work on, but like, do you have structure for it? Or, you know, because I've noticed before you said, oh, I just do the things I feel like need to be done. Is this something you put structure to? So then you can kind of, you know, measure and grow or how does this work for you? That's a great question. Um, I have put structure to it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I don't have any structure to it. It's just sort of a group of women that um, we all sort of know that we go to each other. We may have a group yeah. text or, you know, um, sometimes we'll set, you know, a group. We usually have a quarterly sort of like accountability meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not an organizer of people or things, which is goes with my personality yeah. of uh, of uh, going with my gut. So it happened that one of the members is a very good organizer. <laughs> <laughs> so she handles making us sure that we all get together. Mm -hmm. um, I find I was doing one that was we were meeting like every two weeks. And oh. we really that came because of the pandemic. And I think a lot of us felt really petrified in the beginning of the pandemic that we're entrepreneurs not knowing what was going to happen. And that kind of ran its course just because things settled out and we figured, yeah. and we did it for about a year and it was wonderful. Um, but we all sort of knew at the same time, we're like, we don't think we need to meet every two weeks anymore. Yeah. Um, and then we shifted things a bit. So it really ebbs and flows um, depending on sort of what's going on in the business. But right now uh, we try to meet quarterly and then we just stay connected via either text or email or whatever's easier for everybody um, to do it that way. And it's not always 
a group. So sometimes I have, like, I do have a group, yeah. but then I have one or two other people outside that are just separate, that are completely um, different that I may talk to about other issues. So I think I sort of mentally uh, organize it, but yeah. nothing's, nothing so regimented. Yeah. Keeping that balance, almost like you have a talent map mm -hmm. in your head <laughs> or a support yeah. map. <laughs> yeah. Like I have specific people that I really rely on or count on if a specific issue comes up. Oh, very cool. Um, one of the things I find, you know, especially with how you're presenting, you know, you're presenting of information, education in the legal space for, you know, entrepreneurs, content creators, businesses, et cetera, um, because we're getting to be such a weird, we're all kind of the same and we're all very different, which is fun. Um, one of the things I found so interesting was just, you know, your willingness to kind of provide content and sort of how the content was relevant versus, um, what I always fight on because it's so easy to fall into is content for content's sake. You were hitting, you know, what would you really, you know, what advice would you say for some, you know, for an entrepreneur or person, you know, creating a business or doing something that all of a sudden they've passed that idea of like, Oh, is this going to work to, they have a half a million to a million, maybe low seven figures where all of a sudden it's like, okay, this is something. But what's it going to be when it grows up and how am I going to keep it going? Because that's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. What, what advice do you give to people in that space? You have to know your basics and you have to build your foundations. You have to know the data in your business. Yes. You have to know your analytics. You have to have all your foundations built. I don't just mean legal. Um, you have to have your core employees I don't know many people who make it to seven figures without at least doing some hiring. Yeah. Um, and you have to make sure you know who you need to help you continue to scale because um, your team is going to be really uh, so important. You also have to make a pact with yourself that you will delegate because <laughs> um, you can't do it all yes. and know where to let go. So you need to reassess your role as founder and stop thinking of yourself as someone who has just created something that is happily moving along to reframing your brand as CEO. It's a very different role. Reframing your brand as CEO. That's a cool <laughs> I like I just no. spill these things out. Yes. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. We're gonna take little video clips and pop up. But no, I mean because I've had other entrepreneurs talk about, you know, you lean into the concept, um, you lean into the concept of what your mission is, you know, um, some really great, you know, that this idea of like, when you're in that transition, getting people to kind of come into, you know, deeper into it, not just your employees, not just your customers, but like creating that whole environment around it. But I like, yeah, because I like that because you go from being, yeah, you know, what's that, um, yeah, you know, wandering the desert, <laughs> shouting to the things. You find that one strange person who will dance. You're, yeah, you, know, you ever see that video, the YouTube video of like, how do you get a crowd dancing? And it's mm -hmm. not the one fool, which I always feel like I am dancing by themselves in the corner or in the middle. It's like the second person. You know, it's mm -hmm. when the second person starts dancing and then, you know, so I like, you know, you have to rebrand yourself. I like, all right. How are you? I mean, if I'm going to throw, how are you looking at rebranding yourself as CEO now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I walked into that. that question. I was like, ah, oh, what did I do? Uh, for me, <laughs> it was um, the type of work that I now do. Mm -hmm. It is the delegation. It is um, knowing when uh, a staff attorney on my staff can do the work that I'm currently doing, or knowing when I need to let my director of operations just take over. Uh, you know, I'll give you an example. So she's, we are highly automated um, mm -hmm. and my processes are everything in, in our legal practice. And she, re my, my ops director recently came to me and said, 
I think I want to change platforms. And I was like, I have to learn a new platform. Yes. Um, and I, and <laughs> I was like, what? And she said, uh, and I just looked at her and I said, that's yours. You decide, you pick it. If you like it, I trust you and go for it. I, obviously, I make sure that we have security and and it's it's a fit and all those things. But she did the research. She did every single one of the, um, the free trials. She spent mm-hmm a few months looking into it, I blessed it. And she came back and she very clearly convinced me. And she said, okay, this is where I think we should go. This is what I've done. This is the pricing. This is what it can do. All these things. And for me, that was 30 minutes of my time. Um, And I was able to say, done, let's do it, go. And she felt really empowered because she owns it. It's hers. She's going to create it. She's going to make those workflows, those processes, and then she's going to teach all of us. So we all know. Also, not making sure that only not only one person knows how to do things in your business. Um, we'll just make that a side note. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it really was in the past, I would have been like wanting to know, well, what is it? What does it do? How much is it? All these things. And I would have been asking over and over again. And it, that's not a good use of my time. So knowing where I am best served in the business, um, which includes a lot of things like what speaking engagements am I going to take now? What, um, Where am I going to put my time? Because time is really, really limited. And it mm-hmm. also is served by what clients are we going to allow into the practice? It's not just bring us all the clients. It's yeah. are you a fit for our practice and and do we have space for it? Because we're, we're busy, um, which is wonderful and I'm grateful for, but it's also knowing when I'm, it's going to be a good fit. So that's where I'm best served as CEO, as guiding all of that versus um, scheduling somebody to have a phone call with me or figuring out what software we're going to use and all those um, tasks that are incredibly important, but not important for me to do. Well, now that you're not focusing on, you know, and I'll paraphrase, working in and you're starting to work more on, on hashtag legal, where do you want to take where do you want to take it? I love that question. Um, I want to take it to a place where we are, and we are in this transition now, which is really, really cool because many of our clients that we started with five or six years ago have grown really, really big businesses. Yeah. And so I am far more focused on some of those larger businesses, um, the businesses that need what I'll call outside general counsel. Um, versus the one-off projects where someone, and I'm excited to work with those people, but someone saved a really long time to re- to file a trademark application. Mm-hmm. They're lovely clients and I love working with those clients, but my time is more focused on working with those larger clients on strategy because that's just what gets me super excited. So shifting to um, almost all of my work, and I have impl- staff attorneys that can do those trademarks for those people who are coming in and who are just starting out. But my goal and focus is really having an impact on organizations by taking 16 years of legal practice and all the business experience and all, like I said, like I hear all the problems. I know the stuff that's coming up in specific industries so that I can really be an effective partner. That's really the goal and where I'm taking the business. No, very cool. No, no, I'm, (laughs) I'm, Nothing right now, but I'm already thinking like, ooh, okay, if we're going to do this and this. Um, all right, different conversation. Um, given that you are looking, you know, you've been looking at rebranding yourself as CEO and you're looking at taking the firm to sort of match the growth of your clients here, how are you, how do you go about defining success for yourself? Because you talked about having this group where you do celebrate each other's success. And that was an interest. And I just want to kind of, yeah. Do you go out of your, yeah. first, do you go out of your way to celebrate your own successes? And then two, you know, how do you go about defining those successes? Yeah. I am horrible at celebrating my own successes. Yes. I'll lay it out there. Yeah. I am so bad. I don't even think about it. I'll be honest. You know, something pops up and I'm like, that's cool. And then it's then on to the next thing. Yes. Um, which is <laughs> terrible. It's not, it's not good. Um, I think the way that I've always defined success is uh, 
feeling proud of the work that I do. Mm -hmm. So when I can leave a day or um, an interaction and be like, yeah, I, I, I feel good about how I handled that. That to me is success. It's never been monetary for me. It's never been, um, I have to have X number of clients. It hasn't been, you know, when we hit our thousandth matter, it wasn't that. It, it For me, success is always um, knowing that we're making things a little bit better or easier for someone, not just my clients, but also my employees. They're, that's really key to me. Um, and creating a working environment that feels safe, mm -hmm. um, that's not toxic, that's not doesn't deal with a lot of the challenges that many young attorneys, particularly female attorneys, often yes. face. That's a success to me, is knowing that my employee can come to me and say, hey, I'm really stuck on this and I'm confused. And she felt safe enough to talk it out with me without fear that I'd scream at her, <laughs> fire her, <laughs> because she professed to say she didn't know something. Um, that's success. So I feel really proud of that. And when I can walk away feeling just good about it, like, you know, I'm leaving things a little bit better than I found them. Very cool. Yeah. Um, it's funny. I like that a lot. Um, because that's as an ex boy scout, that is, you know, you know, you leave, you know, you leave, leave where, you know, leave, pack in, pack out and leave it better than you found it. Um, but oh, then also the whole idea of that. like, yeah, the industry is, you know, needs work and, you know, we can not go into some of the things that Boy Scouts need to be working on or scouting. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, well, I also, I feel like the money comes when hmm. you live by those values, when you have a good product or you have a good service and you continue to, it, it follows so if you feel good about the work that you're doing and you're providing a service that's needed, obviously, in the market, um, it, the rest of those metrics that people typically utilize yeah. to define success will follow. Yeah. And I think your, your, back, you know, your experiences and background also kind of add up to the idea that consistency creates value. You've been... Yes. Yeah. You know, you've been you know, one step to the other to the other. And... Yes, maybe different things, maybe environments that haven't been as great, but definitely this concept of like, okay, how can I bring value to this and that consistent effort over a long period of time? You know, I always like to say it's that concept of like overnight success, you know, 20 years in the making. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe not, yes. I'm maybe l much less for you, but, um, no, not much less actually. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> it's actually more longer for me. But um, still, um, no, it is. I really, I think that is very cool. Well, if you know, besides going to hashtag legal um, and check it's, and then checking out your Instagram hashtag at. Hashtag League. We'll have everything in the show notes, folks. Um, you know, how else can people engage with you? Yeah, I mean, the best place to find out more about us is definitely on our website. Um, and that is hashtag dash legal.com. Instagram is a really good place. And certainly if you want to email us, you can find us at info at hashtag dash legal.com. It's all spelled out um, and we will get back to you, but you can find out our Instagram is definitely the best place to check out and yeah. see what it is that we do. Um, that handles hashtag underscore legal. Uh, and we post like, I mean, we do not take ourselves seriously no. at all. You it's can probably vibe. figure that out. But yeah, it's very sort of relaxed and towards education and we have a lot of fun with it, but we do post a lot of videos and infographics and just like, you know, information that anybody who is starting a business may need uh, is what our goal is. Oh, cool. Thank you so much for coming on today, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This was cool. Thank you for listening to that conversation I just had with Jamie. I really, really like a lot of how she's approaching the legal field. And I know there is an argument to be made from law firms being entrepreneurial or not. What she is doing really is the definition of entrepreneurial activity. They're adapting, changing, and providing, finding ways to create more value for their clients, you know, like an agency does and et cetera. So look, 
really a lot of fun to kind of dive into it. I like how she talks about to always changing where the opportunity is. Now, she kind of said it throw away, but when she went and explained it, I know there are many entrepreneurs, myself included, who have bright, you know, bright shiny object syndrome. <gasps> Something cool. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, we need to do this. Oh, let's NFT. What, what, what can we do? Is it? Yeah. Look, when you listen to her explanation, she definitely isn't, you know, <laughs> chasing. She's moving from one piece to the other, from moving in a very strategic, you know, pattern to go and create higher value for her clients. You know, she talks about her clients having a, you know, growing and a changing needs. So the way she's creating her law firm is changing and adapting. So she can not only provide the services they need, but also be there to better provide strategic and you know, it's not just her, but her whole organization. And that's kind of where I think some of the magic is. And then as we are looking, if you have a client base that changes and adapts and just the, you know, overall space, how does that happen? And how do you go and kind of go, I know in my past efforts running agencies, I've always looked at like, what would it take for us to be of strategic value to our company, to be able to provide strategic advice for value for our clients. And being able to kind of look at that is one way to consistently drive your growth and your focus of what you need to grow. I like then also how she create, she talks about working to create the environment to have the team, you know, her law firm, the people working for her, um, to be able to create this. She realized that the legal profession that she experienced working for other in other firms wasn't very uh, supportive, wasn't a type of environment she was very happy being in. So by working to kind of create something that's inclusive and you know is where she would want to, she can find people who also want to have that environment, which probably leads to being more flexible in how to deliver, you know, law. Legal service and law for service is great. Legal services to clients that are adapting. I mean, I know I was raised by a lawyer and I know lots of lawyers who are very good people, but sometimes they get very, very stuck in how things are done. Looking at something like this and how she's trying to create that space and having her team be the type of people who are open to change, I think is going to allow them to be more adaptable. So she's creating that environment. When you're looking at you know types of work, type of clients, thinking of who are the people you need on your team and what type of environment that they, they would like so they would be interested in then joining you and joining you on this effort to provide these services or provide value for your clients, I think is an interesting thought process. And I like how she's gone about it, talks about it. Um, and then lastly, a little bit of a throwaway line, um, something to think about because of where it came from. As she's been growing and transitioning into a larger business, she realized, you know, she needs to, you know, push responsibility deeper and throughout her organization, you know, but with the definite caveat to make sure that there's not only one person in the organization who knows how to do something. And uh, I know that is uh, really important, having kind of created that situation in the past in some of my efforts. It's like, you know, one day you're doing it, then you have, then you try and move it into the, you know, your company and you're like, oh, great, it's being done. And then you completely forget how to do it. Three years later, you're like, uh, wait, how do we, um, wait, they, they, they just moved across the country to a new, wait. So long story short, it is kind of a, yeah, it's a throwaway. It's, it's a little bit of a ha ha, but the impact of moving from, I'm going to do it to my organization, to this person in my organization is going to do it to the organization has the understanding of how to get it done, whether it be just one person with you know, processes in place, so another person or multiple people, that is that kind of growth process that companies go through in order just 
to grow, you know, to get to that next level. So it was really interesting the way she kind of just tossed it out there. I love what they're doing. And I think, you know, looking at their services and the way they're doing, there's a lot of value. If you are def- if you are in this space and you're looking for legal services, you won't go wrong with at least having a conversation with them. Um, hashtag dash legal.com. We'll make sure we have uh, the URLs and everything. Uh, hashtag legal on Instagram is a little bit faster and easier. Um, go check them out. Great content and some great stuff to think about around your legal uh, situations, you know, that you may have in starting, growing, and running um, a company. There's lots of fun stuff. Um, so it's kind of interesting what they're doing. Um, and as always, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please go leave us a review on iTunes. Um, or if you didn't, leave us a review and tell us what you would like us to work on. Go check out the website, beyond8figures.com, and sign up for our newsletter so we can send you updates of when we have other cool guests and we have people talking about things that will really help you on your own entrepreneurial journey. So thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Can't wait to talk to you again. Bye-bye.